uh, I wanted to cover that Bernie Sanders has now basically put out his plan for climate change and how we're going to deal with the horrors that global warming is going to bring to us. And his response to it is a Green New Deal, a slimmed down version of it, not the one that AOC put forward, but another one. But don't worry, his is only going to cost us $16.3 trillion in the span of 10 years. So it's it's not like it's the real expensive one that AOC put forward. Granted, it is a lot cheaper than the 50 to $90 trillion one that AOC proposed, so it's not quite as expensive. And again, to put that into perspective, there's maybe $90 trillion worth of money on the entire Earth. Like, you combine all of it, and that's going to be roughly about how much money is on this planet. Yeah. Uh, AOC's plan was going to use literally all the money in the world in the span of 10 years. But, but Bernie Sanders, you know, Bernie, because he's, he's known for being fiscally conservative. Whenever you think fiscal conservatism... I mean, some people would think Rand Paul, but most people are like, yeah, that Bernie guy, I mean, he's a budget hawk. So thanks, Bernie, for being so conscientious and only coming forward with a Green New Deal that, that was only going to cost us. We, we can have this Green New Deal for the low, low price of only $16.3 trillion. All right, to, to understand how expensive $16.3 trillion is, the federal government brings in $4.8 trillion a year. That's how much we brought in last year. And it fluctuates a little bit from year to year, but projected it's not going to move much between $4 and $8 trillion unless there's a, a pretty big tax increase or decrease. So we bring in roughly that amount of money. And since this is going to be over the span of 10 years, to adjust that to how much it would cost a year, it's going to be about... 1.6 trillion a year. So what that means is if we implement Bernie's plan, we're currently bringing in 4.8 trillion dollars and that's that's every dime from every American we collect taxes from. He's saying that this is going to cost us 1.6 trillion a year. So in other words, to not incur more debt to to just keep the deficit at the level that it's at right now, we would have to increase taxes by 34%. So more, more than a third of what we're gathering in taxes now, we'd have to increase it by that much. It just, it amazes me that Bernie gets away with this and people in the media do not call him out. That, um, yeah, Bernie, that's going to cost a lot of money. A lot of money. And not just from rich people, if you increase... I mean, think about this. How much are you paying in taxes right now? What percentage of your income goes toward taxes? I'm guessing based on most of my listeners and their income level, eh, probably anywhere from 20 to 30%. Okay, well, imagine that you have to increase that by 34%. The United States GDP is only $19 trillion a year. So, in other words, we would be using a significant amount of the GDP, the gross domestic product, and, and that's the, the product of, of everything America makes. Every single thing that America makes, all the wealth that we create in a year, comes up to about 19 trillion bucks a year. That's about how much we create. And Bernie's saying we need to spend 1.6 trillion of it, that we need to spend all of that just on climate change. And remember, his is the cheaper of the two plans by a significant amount. <laughs> this thing takes over entire industries and bans some of them. For example, it basically nationalizes the oil industry. Yeah, you know who does that? Actual communists. This isn't even socialism anymore. We're talking about guys like Chavez and Joseph Stalin. What's the first thing that Hugo Chavez did when he took power? He nationalized the oil, and he took the most oil-rich country on earth and made it into a poverty-stricken wasteland. 
he has more natural resources to work with than the Saudis, and he still can't freaking make it work. And neither did Maduro after he kicked the bucket. And somehow, Bernie Sanders taking over the oil companies and nationalizing it, them, that's going to really help the American economy. That's going to make it a lot better for us. You've got to be outside of your ever-loving mind if you believe that. So, I know that the, the immediate response to this is going to be, but Caleb, the 1% will pay for it. I mean, yeah, it's going to be super expensive, but it's not like the average American is going to have to pay for it. Even though Bernie Sanders has actually admitted many times in debates and on stage that, yes, your taxes are going to necessarily go up, even if you're middle class, which, granted, he downplays it and downplays how bad it's going to be. But I at least appreciate the honesty that after years of saying it wasn't going to happen, he admitted, yeah, if you implement my policies, the, the, middle, the, the middle class is going to have to pay for it. But his followers still don't believe that. I know because I debate with them sometimes. And a lot of the Bernie fanboys still don't believe that the middle class is actually going to see a tax increase. They just constantly say, ah, the 1% will pay for it. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, if you tax the 1%, the top 1% in this country, if you tax them at 100%, took every single dime that they had, they got to keep none of it. If you tax 100% of their income, it would generate about $500 billion. Just barely over 30% of what we would need to pay for this thing. And that's if we tax them at 100%. And by the way, that also assumes, even though there's no way that this is true, that would assume that even after having every cent that they made that year taken, they would still go back to work the next year and provide that $500 billion the next time. They would basically work for nothing and get nothing out of it. You're suggesting to me that they would continue to do that. Well, if they do, if we actually tax them at 100%, they got to keep nothing that they made. It would still only pay for 30% of this plan. There's no way that the 1% can bear this burden. It's literally mathematically impossible. At, at the bare minimum, 70%, of this $16 trillion is going to have to come from people that are not in the 1%. It's just a mathematical fact. And another response to this is going to be, but Caleb, it's going to generate 20 million jobs. That's what Bernie has been promising. And so the increase that we're going to see from that 20 million jobs, that's going to be what really makes it work. Well, first of all, you're arguing in a logical loop. Because you're saying that we have to tax more people, but then we're going to pay people and we can tax the people that we pay. Well, then by definition, if they get to keep any of that money, then they're not going to be bringing it all back. And so even if you create 20 million jobs, which there's no reason to believe that that would be the case, I'm sure it'll create some, probably not all, and they'd be government jobs. You're creating federal employees. Have you ever seen in the history of this country where creating a massive amount of federal employees was better for the economy than creating jobs in the private sector? Can anyone give me a historic example of that? And I, I'm not doing this rhetorically. I'm not poking fun. I'm genuinely asking, where is there an example of hiring a bunch of federal employees actually improve the American economy? Can you draw that logical line for me? Because I've never seen it, and I've read a lot of American history. And if we were to generate these 20 million jobs and you were to split this 16 trillion between each of them, that means we're spending $80,000 per person per year. We'd literally be better off just taxing Americans 34% and giving them money without asking them to do anything economically at the rate that this is going to cost us. And that would assume that every cent of this money went directly to paying for the federal employees that are created in these 20 million jobs. It's not going to. We just talked about other expenses that are listed here. This thing is obviously going to end up being far more expensive than it actually is. And you'll remember, if you're thinking back on this, this is very reminiscent 
of what Obama claimed that the stimulus package was going to do. Well, yeah, it's going to cost us a lot of money, but we're going to make that money back on the other end because it's going to create all these shovel-ready jobs. And even Obama had to admit that it wound up being a massive failure. Even he had to admit, yeah, shovel-ready wasn't nearly as shovel-ready as we thought. The same thing's going to happen here because it tries to drastically increase the size of the federal government and the only thing that you're getting out of it, you're spending way more money per job than you would be if you just let the free market do its own thing. You're losing money on both ends of this. So the question is, would there be a net gain? Because all of these industries that you're talking about nationalizing and destroying, well, that would be at the bare minimum 6.8 million jobs that America currently holds in industry. So even if you created 20 million jobs at the bare minimum, this plan would destroy 6.8 million. And so at the absolute best case scenario, everything that Bernie Sanders says is going to happen is going to happen. All of this goes perfectly and smoothly, and there are no complications whatsoever, which we know always happens when the government puts a plan into action. 6.8 million are going to be gone, so your net gain at the absolute best case scenario is going to be a little over 13 million. There's just no way that this all pans out. And here's another thing. Since Bernie is so fond of saying that we're going to tax the 1%, which again, as, as I've already explained, that wouldn't even come close to paying for this. I assume at least some of the 1%, maybe not all of them, in fact, I'm sure not all of them, but I'm assuming at least some of the 1% have jobs and investments in energy like oh, oil and coal and natural gas. I'm assuming at least some of their money is tied to that, so how's that going to work? How are you going to tax the 1% and have them pay for it when you're destroying one of their primary sources of income. That's not going to work. Any, any child could see that and say, well, if you're taking away their source of income, how are they going to pay for it? I'm not saying it's their only source of income. But I mean, come on, there's got to be quite a few people, even if they're not oil barons or directly involved in energy production companies themselves, you got to believe that at least some of their uh, assets and their investments are tied up in that. Another big example, let's look at uh let's look at Amazon. It's not an energy company. It doesn't even necessarily deal in energy. I mean, to my knowledge, they're not delivering gasoline or propane to anybody. But if gas prices all of a sudden skyrocket because you're getting rid of fossil fuels, What's going to happen to Jeff Bezos, who, by the way, is very much on the left, very much a Democrat supporter? What's going to happen to Amazon's profit when they have to implement shipping and it's going to be three or four times as much? How do you think that's going to affect their sales and their bottom line? You, you can't just say that, oh, we're going to get rid of all these things and it's going to be fine and it's not going to affect the economy in any other way. And we'll just have the 1% pay for it. Yet the 1% are not going to be able to produce at the level they are now if you implement all these policies. And by the way, remember, this is one policy. One. This isn't counting all the spending that we are going to expand under Bernie Sanders when it comes to things like Social Security it's not counting any of that, and let's also not forget that Bernie Sanders, the hallmark of his campaign, is that we are going to get rid of college debt, which is also going to be incredibly expensive, and even more expensive, is we're going to move to Medicare for all, which, by the way, according to Bernie Sanders' own people, this is not a conservative website, I'm not pulling this from The Blaze or uh, the Daily Wire, any of the conservative sites, Bernie Sanders, from his own mouth, is saying that at minimum, Medicare for All is going to cost $30 trillion. So even if you lowball it at $46.3 trillion a year, because that's what you get when you add that $30 trillion to the $16.3 trillion Green New Deal he's now proposing, it would take us more than three years of a 10-year period, that's what these figures are for, of that 10 years, it would take us three years to pay that off 
if we spent every single cent that every single American, poor, rich, whatever, if you taxed every single citizen at 100%, it would still take us three entire years out of that 10-year period he's predicting just to pay off these two programs. Bernie, you've got to be outside your ever-loving mind to believe that this would work. It's just not possible. The Democrats are living in a fantasy world. And anybody with a calculator and a monicum of common sense can figure that out. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet totally made up.